All right, so we got a bunch of things to discuss in this video. For starters, um, I wanna talk about this new AMD vulnerability. It's a pretty big issue. Uh, more or less on the older end of their CPUs, so Ryzen 3000, that kind of stuff. We'll go over that in this video. I want to also do a re-roll for this keyboard. Unfortunately, the guy who won uh, cannot take it, so unfortunately uh, for him, I will be doing a re-roll, and that's fortunate for you guys. Also, I got a build coming, and this is the GPU I'll talk about in a minute. It's going to be kind of cool. My daughter's birthday is coming up, so I'm going to kind of surprise her with a whole new system overhaul so hopefully that'll be a fun video for you guys to watch if you're interested stay tuned on that and then lastly i'll just segue right into this next part so many of you guys know i'm on an intel system i've had 13 700ks 13 900ks i actually reverted back i'm on my second 13 700k um, i did not keep any of the 13 900ks that have come through simply because the heat was too much in my system um but Anyway, so I'm not currently having any issues with my Intel system. I've spent a lot of time tuning the BIOS and I'm well aware of all the problems that could be coming down the line. Um, I reported on this in 2023. I've always had beef with these Intel CPUs. So I personally have been really interested in going back to AMD. Ryzen 9000 looked really good when they showed it off. And now, as you guys probably have seen, some of the reviews like Hardware and Box just did a retest review. That was, I believe, earlier today. And that review with PBO and all those like change settings that that people thought would make the CPUs much faster, it still didn't really help in any way. And the other thing, too, is uh, Daniel Owen pointed this out. The 9700X is kind of just a 9700. It's not even a 9700X. They're comparing and contrasting the wrong parts. 700X. Uh, the problem is that nowhere on this chart is the 7700. And I'm not saying that Gamers Nexus did anything wrong. They included a ton of CPUs here. They, I think, tested even more that just didn't fit onto these charts. And we'll probably see even more on their, uh, you know, website that they that that they put up there. And not everybody can test every single CPU. But the problem is that I think we should be comparing against these 7700 non-X. Also, um, I've seen people talking about uh, Precision Boost Overdrive and whether that should be being used when looking at performance. Because I've been seeing a lot of people saying, well, okay, the 5% the, the performance gains uh, uh, look a lot better if you allow PBO to go up to maximum settings. So long story short, I think I'll just wait for the X3D stuff. And for anyone who's on Ryzen 7000 right now, or even Ryzen 5000, if you have like a 5800X3D and you're like, I wanna jump to the newest thing, I skipped 7000, obviously you gotta wait for the X3D stuff. It just wouldn't make any sense to, to go and jump to like a, a base 9000. And I doubt that the new stuff next week with the uh, 9950X and the 9900X, man, their names are so confusing because of old Intel. The, if anyone doesn't know, old Intel X299 had these same naming schemes. But long story short, I would skip it um, for now until X3D comes out and they show you some real numbers. And who knows, they might not even because this generation seems like a little bit of a dud if you want me to be honest. So moving on to the AMD vulnerability. So this is kind of a big deal and not a big deal at the same time. And let me clarify that. I think it's a big deal that AMD is not supporting their older CPUs. So this is a list of what is being supported. Um, they're talking about, you know, Ryzen 5000 series, 7000, um, 8000. You have a bunch of the data center CPUs that not that many people have. And and then when you start to look at how many people are using stuff like the 2600X, the 3600X, the, I, I actually, one of the most recent upgrades for me was jumping to the 13th gen from a 3950X. And I still happen to know quite a few customers of mine that are running third gen with things like a 3090. So this guy's channel, Windows Computers and Technology, does a better job laying out the list versus Tom's hardware. And I will link his video below. But anyways, using his slider or uh, word here, um, basically these are the affected CPUs. And so here's where it's like not concerning. You have to actually get malware first to have been affected after. So to actually be affected, you need to have already gotten malware on your system. And I feel like most people who are doing like PC gaming stuff, like video editing, all that kind of stuff, they tend to be a little bit smarter. Like, come on, don't use, uh, you know, if you're going to watch porn, don't use your computer, use your phone. Jesus. Um, but yeah, besides that, here's where it gets a little concerning. Something like the Ryzen 3000, for example, 
Um, those processors are getting a little bit older, but they're such great deals. And I sell them often, and I know a lot of people that have them on like the budget line of stuff. So like people who are buying like $500 computers with a 3060 and like, I don't know, maybe, maybe a 3700X or something like that. Those people who don't really pay attention to the market as much, and there's a ton of them out there. Like, take it from me as somebody who has sold so many computers, I just, most people don't upgrade uh, like an enthusiast upgrades all the time. They're on older hardware, 2600Xs, like even 1600Xs. I see them all the time. Um, so AMD is not gonna be covering those people. And those are oftentimes some of the people who will end up getting malware on their computer. And I think it's a, uh, I think it's a little shady that they're not they're not just covering everyone and trying to write i get i get like writing a ton of microcode can be insane and um these issues apparently date back all the way to, to 2006 so this is a long-running problem um amd is aware of it but it's i don't know it's something that uh i think they should take care of everybody on this so to further explain this a little bit um essentially the only way you can have this problem is to have already had been affected on the kernel level by malware, first of all. And then once this hack or um, this vulnerability takes place, essentially it gets latched onto the CPU and affects the CPU's um, internal management. It, it'll basically destroy your system, which is not good. And um, hopefully, you know, they take back, like I was saying, hopefully they think about patching all the systems because it seems a little ridiculous to uh you know say these model cpus are out of service or at least ones that are within like the ddr4 range right um intel did this for specter and meltdown they had to do it so why not amd so this next thing i'm pretty excited about my kid is turning 12 and this is a justin cute pet gpu i'm sure maybe some of you guys have seen this before uh, I'll do a proper unboxing with her um, on her birthday and, you know, I just, I had to open it first and, you know, make sure it worked, right? But um, yeah, so next week we're throwing together a system and I've seen these before. These used to be uh, a long time ago. They were like RX 580s that had these uh, funny, cute cat designs. And um, Gamers Nexus, actually, he always has a computer in the background, a computer case. I really wish I got my hands on this case because now they're selling for like a thousand dollars. But um, it's the cute pet case. And if you look in any GN video, you'll see it. So yeah, that's the card, and she's getting a bunch of things like vertical uh, mount, uh, we're redoing her fans, she's getting a new AIO cooler. So I'm gonna have her rebuild her PC and also edit parts of the video. Um, I'll throw up some of the footage of just this card, just for fun, uh, some like B-roll stuff, but she's gonna be doing a lot of the work, and it should be a pretty fun project, like watching a kid go through the stage of upgrading her system, um, you know, checking out, we'll do some like benchmarks of the game she plays, like Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, she plays this game called Wobble World or Wobble Life, Wobble Life, and that game is awesome. It's like a GTA for children. So we're gonna go and benchmark some of the games, do a before and after, and um, she's just gonna get, have a pretty sick system, and I'm pretty pumped for her. All right, here we go. We're gonna select the winner for this keyboard. Um, the last guy who won, he was super chill about it. He lived really far away, and he couldn't accept it, unfortunately. But um, I do appreciate you. I appreciate you being cool about not having it shipped. Um, again, USA and Canada for right now, it's just, it's really tough to ship to other countries. The reason why I couldn't ship this, or it didn't make sense to ship it, was it was gonna be double the cost of the keyboard just to send it out, which I get it. Some people, like if you wanted to pay for it, I'd be happy to work a deal out with you. But for a lot of people, it doesn't make any sense because you can just buy this keyboard flat out free shipping brand new. Um, so anyways, I got one other question before I select somebody here. How interested are you guys in mini PCs? Because I get a lot of um, inquiries about taking them and doing reviews and stuff. And I really don't like to do too many reviews on that type of stuff unless it's good. And they're always sending me this like old stock, 
you know, stuff from like, like last gens, like APUs from Ryzen, and everyone knows how those perform. But recently I got a more, let's say like relevant or newer mini PC that would be a really good deal for around 400 bucks. And so I'm in talks with this company, but I don't want to accept it if no one is really interested in it. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment down below if that's something that you guys are interested in. I, I mostly focus on desktop, so, um, but I kind of want to try one. So yeah, let's go and uh, do a pick. So I'm going to do anything goes, no duplicates, include replies. I'm going to get rid of that and we will get a winner. All right, Brett Hackey 7713. I repasted my dual 3060 Ti using Noctua NH NTH2 and the temps drop from low 80s to low 70s. Some less intense games run even cooler. I didn't even replace the pads because I didn't have the right size. Repasting is definitely worth it in my opinion, but look up pad thickness in order and order pads ahead of time. Great comment, man. Um, yeah, the Noctua paste always is really good. I've used it many times in the past um i've actually started using some of the cheaper paste too on stuff and it's like been okay it really depends um but i always arctic paste is like the go-to for budget um thanks again man i will post your name up in the community post and uh we'll get to talks about this just make sure you send me an email and yeah that's the end of the video so drop a like sub if you haven't and i'll see you in another video bye